everyone it's Neil here from 3D Tudor back today with another great geometry node and this time it's conveyor belts and what you're seeing on the screen right now is a sneak peek at our latest course and this course was built around the conveyor belt geometry node and you can also see that within this scene it's got that kind of charming art style of the low poly design or cocoa melon which has been made pretty famous by the artistic look and my kids absolutely love it. Now before moving on, this course will be out early October and we'll be putting out pre-orders over the next week. And not only will you actually be helping support us here, but you'll also save some money. But enough of all that, let's get started on this fantastic geometry node. So here we are in the scene and this is the actual blend file that you're going to receive. So within here, you'll have a few examples to actually start you out working. You can see at the moment, we have a couple of items. These are the items that are gonna be moving along the conveyor belt. You can see we've also got supports in here. We've got some gears and more importantly, we actually have the belt. So these are the actual belt parts. So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm just going to move these over here and just hide them out of the way to have a fresh start to show you how this actually works. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press Shift A. I'm gonna bring in a path. So let's bring in a path, RZ90. Let's press the S button just to bring it out a bit. And then all I'm gonna do is reset all the transforms as you always should. And from here then what you can do is you can add in a modifier geometry node and bring in a conveyor belt. This is how it will come in to start with. Don't worry about that. All you need to do is first of all come down and disable gears and make sure that then the supports are disabled and you'll end up with something like this. Now at the moment you can see that this bell is based on this one but we can actually change this out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to change this out. So if I come up, you will see that it says enable. So you've got a belt part enabled and what I can do is just click that off and then click on my next belt. And there you go, now you can see what's happened. Now as you can see, if you go into these, you will need a fair amount of resolution. So if you're using a simple cube, just make sure that you've got some edge loops in there. And this is just to make sure that it will actually bend around these actual corners like so. Now what you can see as well is I can also alter this in real time. So if I come in and let's give it an actual color. So we'll change the color of it. So I'll give it uh, this color like so. And what I'll also do is I'll come to the top of it and I'll grab all the top round here, plus plus, and we'll we'll actually make them red. So I'll actually give it a new one. So new, let's just put it on red, and then I'll click assign, and you can see it just changes it automatically in real time. The other great thing about this is as well, if I press Control A or transforms, set origin geometry. If I come in then and add in a modifier, so I'll come in and give myself a, a bevel modifier, you can see as well, this also acts in real time. And let's put it down to something like 0.005, something like that. So now you can see we've got that beautiful bevel on there. Now if I press spacebar, you can see this is working really, really well. All right, so that's the first bit. Now let's come back to our bell. We've got something here that's called height. And what we can actually do then is lift up the height of the bell all in real time. We can even come in at the same time and we can pull these out. So if I want to press uh, G and Y, I can actually pull this out in real time. I can come in and delete these as well in real time. So delete vertices. I can even come in, 
grab the top of here, press G and Z, even while it's animating all in real time, as you can see. So that's really, really cool. Now, the next thing we can do is we can also change how the border looks. So if I come down to the border radius and turn it down, you can see we've got a much, much squarer kind of look there. I can turn it up to whatever I want. It will only go to around about one and then it will stop actually trying to bend it or so it will break the mesh. Now, the next thing we can do as well is we can also change the direction. So if I change the direction, you can see that again, that changes in real time. Now, don't forget, we're actually rendering this out here. So you can see how optimized this actual geometry node is. Now, the next thing we can do is we can come to flat and instead of having, you know, this uh, actual um, belt, uh, conveyor belt going around, we can actually just have it flat because I know there are circumstances when you're going to want that. And then we'll move on now to the actual belt itself. So we've discussed all these parts except this threshold. I'm going to show you this threshold in just one second. But the first of all, I want to just go through the belt options. So what I can do is I can come in now. Put it on object mode because you see I have, you know it's working perfectly fine and what i can first of all do is bring down the intersections and you'll notice as i bring these down they either get further apart or closer together like so and then just press spacebar we can also change the object scale so we can make them big and you'll see that gap stays the same between them we can also bring it all the way down like so and then we can also change the width so we can change the width on these we can change the actual depth on these and we can change the actual length of these to make them much, much longer. And then, of course, we can bring down or up that intersection like so. And you can see it's all on the fly. You can see just how easy it is to use. You can also come in and change it from flat to round. And then you'll end up with something like this. Really, really easy to use. Now, let's actually pause that a minute. So now what I want to do is I basically want an object coming on here. So all I'm going to do then is come down. And I'll actually show you the objects first before the gear. So we're going to just use some simple objects. So I'll come down to where my objects are. You can see here. Now we can either use collections or objects. So if you're using objects, you can just uh, select a simple object, press the space bar, and then you'll end up with the object going down. You can also use collections, which I think is the best way to use this. So at the moment, let's uh, turn off the objects and put it on collection. And the collection then is going to be where these are. So these are just in objects. So I'll come down back down to here and i use collection as objects and there you go you've got your objects in now what we can do now we've got our objects in as you can see they're moving um in intervals and we'll go through how the intervals work as well so first of all though i want to actually turn the direction around so i'm going to switch the direction just so they're going the other way like so because i want to make them actually drop off and move to another ramp once i've showed you these all right, so we've got the objects in place. Now let's go down. And the first thing we've got is the start count. You can have a few actually coming in when you actually start the animation. I'm not gonna worry about that at the moment. We've got the drop interval as well. Now this is also based on with the speed. So in other words, drop interval, they're gonna drop every one second. If I put this on every three seconds, you will see it's gonna be much, much longer now before the next one drops. So let's come around here and there we go. And then another three seconds will pass and then the next one will drop. The other thing is as well, I'm going to make this uh, much smaller, so I'm going to change the scale down. And the other thing is you can see at the moment they're in the belt, we don't really want that, so we can bring that offset up to put them on top of there. We can also change the um, offset randomization. So in other words, how much are they offset, like so. We can also change the scale as well, so we can have them random scales, like so, as you can see there. Now you will see now, they're coming in every three seconds and you can also see that they will now be on different parts on this belt and they will also be a different scale now what i also want to show you is if i now turn up the speed so let's put this on uh, two for instance you will see now realistically these are going to drop every three seconds even though i've turned up the speed like so so you can see now it's nearly at the top before the next one actually drops now if i bring this down to every second and then press spacebar. Now it's every second. You can just see how easy that is to actually change. Okay, so now let's talk about the rotation as well. Because at the moment, we've got Z align rotation, which means that it's always going to line up with the belt, no matter how far this belt is. And we've also got Z rotation. So what I can actually do is and come in and rotate these around like so. I can also put it on a random rotation so that when different things are coming in, you'll see now that they're all randomized. So the randomized scale, they've randomized where they are on the belt, and they've randomized the rotation, which is really important. 
All right, so let's now create our next spell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to press E and Z and bring it down. And then what I'm going to do is pull it out like so. And then I'm going to press E and Y, oh, sorry, X and pull it over like so. Now you can see at the moment that this is kind of broken and we don't really want that. So what we need to do is we need to move this threshold angle down to, um, not five, down to, let's try 60, six zero, like so. And now you can see it's gonna look much, much better. Now what I can also do is pull this over so that these boxes then drop down on top of you. So you can see now they're gonna drop down on top of there and that's exactly what I want. Now what I can also do from when these are dropping down is I can also change, where is it? Let's go down, the gravity. So let's say I put this gravity onto three, press space bar and you'll see now, bang, they actually drop much, much quicker down. We've also got an option which is lerp, which means that how long they actually stay before they actually drop. So if I put this up to one, you will see now, this is what this actually does. So you can see it's just staggering, just at the top. If I put this down to zero, you'll see they just drop stay away. They stick on there before actually moving now. Maybe not down to zero, maybe up a little bit. There we go. You can see though them stuck on there before they actually move. Let's put it up to 3.54, and there you go. So you can see no matter what you're using, you can actually get a decent drop on there with the gravity and with the lerp, and it looks pretty realistic. And remember, this is straight off the bat, and also remember, this is working in real time as well. All right, so now let's move up then. What we're going to look at now is gears. So you can see I can bring gears in. I can also uh, turn down the scale of the gears first. So let's make them fit. Now, of course, the gears or whatever you want to make them. You might even want square gears. I don't know. But these are the gears that we've got at the moment. We can also change um, the distance between them. So I can bring them closer together, further apart. I can have tons and tons of gears if I want to. And I can also change the radius of these. So you can see I can bring the radius up and down. I can actually bring the width out if I really want to or really in. And finally, then I can actually bring on the uh, support. So if I click this on, I'll go to my supports over here. So these are some supports I've created. Click on these and there we go. Now, the thing is with the supports, it's every one of them, but I can put on every two or even every three like so, which is something that I think is really, really great to have. We can also then change the offset so you can change that up or down depending on how you want it. And so with these supports being able to do that, you can get the perfect balance in not having too many supports, not being too cluttered and still looking realistic, holding up those actual parts. We can also click on the ends as well, which makes sure no matter where you put in these, you're always gonna have one on the end. So we can put this on every four and we can still have one on the end. As you can see, let's change that offset. And there we go. You can see just how easy it is to put these in. All right, so now the last thing I want to discuss then is the speed. So you can see we can turn up the speed to whatever we want. So if I put this on six, like so, you can see now they go really, really fast. Now, the other thing is everything on here can be animated again. Even with the speed, you can have a really slow bell and then pick the speed up. So that can all be animated. And I didn't want this video to be too long. And I think actually I've done this conveyor belt some justice you know, showing you everything that it does in that time. So that is our actual Blender Geometry Node conveyor belt. I don't think there's anything like this on the market. Now, for those of you who are asking, can you bring it into Unreal Engine 5? At this point, no, you can't. And that's because we haven't quite got the tools yet to actually convert this into geometry. So it is only usable in Blender, but still you can see you can build a lot of things in Blender with it, a lot of prototyping, things like that or even scenes like what I've just built. And a lot of you are just working in Blender, so that's really great for that sort of thing. All right, everyone, so this is available for a commercial license, a standard license, the links will all be down below. And as I said, later on in the week or next week, early next week, we'll actually put out a pre-order for that factory scene that you saw. And if you wanna get that for free as soon as it comes out, then please think about joining our Patreon. All right, everyone, so I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot, bye-bye.